want to look at this example, a spherical tank with a 3 meter radius is filled with water. What amount of work is required to pump the water 1 meter above the tank, the top of the tank? Alright, so this is a work question. Alright, now, um, work, if you remember, is force times distance. And if you can have force as a function of x, it's actually just an integral. Uh, here we don't have any force, so then we have to remember that force is actually a mass times acceleration. Now if I'm pumping water up the top of a tank, we do have some sort of acceleration because we have to nullify the effects of gravity, but we don't have a mass. So then I go back and remember that mass is actually a density times volume. Okay, so since I'm dealing with a spherical tank, maybe I can start there. And so the idea is we have this, this ball here is supposed to represent my tank, and you have a one meter long spout coming out the top, and you gotta pump all the water out through there. And um, what we have to think about is we're gonna basically slice this thing into little coins of water, and we're gonna calculate the amount of work it takes to to uh, lift that one coin. All right, and so that's where we're gonna get the vo our volume. Now to do that, we need to have some sort of axis system. So let's see, maybe we could start with this being x equals zero. And remember we have a radius of three, so the, the deepest my tank will go would be x equals six. And so from there I can calculate um, the volume of this little coin. If I can get the radius, so let me see, if I did like a cross section of this ball, at a certain point you have this wafering, right, and that's, that's kind of what we're trying to calculate the volume of. So here we have a radius r, but I need to know the radius of this circle and it'd be helpful if we could come up with a formula where that radius is in terms of x. So actually this is not r, we know that value. That value is 3. We're going to call this value r. Alright, so let me, let me uh, draw this a little, a little larger so we can get a better picture of it. Um, we don't really need a full sphere. Okay, so let's say here's our radius 3. And here's my cross section. So I draw a line down. This is r. And I need to get r in terms of x. All right, so where is x, first of all? Well, x is this depth. And so this length here is 3 minus x. Uh, and then also I could calculate, I can make this right triangle. And I know that this hypotenuse here, since it's a radius, is 3. Okay, so I think that kind of answers our question then. Can we get r in terms of x? Yes, because I know that r squared plus this 3 minus x squared has got to equal 3 squared because it's a right triangle, Pythagorean's theorem. Great, so I think from there we just need to solve for r. So we get r squared equals 6x minus x squared, and there I kind of just ran through some of that arithmetic. And so r, for our purposes, is the square root of 6 minus x squared. So there, there's your radius at a given height. Great. So then volume, my volume, I'm going to call it vi, and vi means the volume of this coin at height xi is going to be pi times the radius, and we'll do some six i's in here, quantity squared, times the width. And we say the width of this thing is delta x, right? So we're kind of building a Riemann sum. And so the idea is that we would divide this interval into lengths of delta x, and that determines how thick each of our little water coins are. Great, so there's my volume. So from there we just need to calculate the mass. And remember mass is density times volume. 
uh, since I'm dealing with water, I know that my density is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So we get a thousand for there times the volume. So that's pi times. And if I just square the square root, I get six xi minus xi star delta x. Great. So there's my mass. So then I should be able to calculate a force. So my fi then is going to be um, all that mass, so 1,000 pi times 6 xi minus xi star delta x times acceleration due to gravity. So that's going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Great. So now I think we're ready for our work. So my wi then is going to be uh, my force times some sort of distance. So I have 9,800 pi times 6 xi minus xi squared delta x times a distance. And the distance I have to, that this water coin has to travel is this value, which is your x. But remember, we also have this one meter spout sticking out the top. So we have to go travel one additional meter. So the distance traveled is actually xi plus one. Okay, so there's a value for work of one piece of the coin. So then to actually calculate my work work, that's the limit as n goes infinity, the sum starting with one, uh, I going from 1 to N of WI, which is actually an integral of these W's, or these W of X functions, so we'll write it out. 9,800 pi, 6X minus X squared, times X plus 1, DX. And here we're integrating from 0 to six, from the bottom of the tank to the top of the tank. Great, so this is an, an integral is not too bad. You take out the 9,000 pi, and you have a polynomial here. So that's, uh, that's actually, let's see, if you add up your squares, you get five x squared, minus x cubed, plus six x, dx. All right, so from there you get, um, 9,800 pi, negative one fourth, x to the fourth, five thirds, x cubed, plus three x squared, going from zero to six. And if you calculate that, so I'll kind of fluff through the arithmetic here, you get approximately 4,433,916. And this is calculated in joules. So a better way of saying this maybe is 4.4 times 10 to the sixth joules, right? That gives you an approximation of the amount of work it requires to drain this tank or to pump the water out of this tank. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know and I'd be glad to try to answer them. Thank you.